What does this mean for the travel industry now? Well, Steve, that is uncertain. The news today isn't really a game changer. Eight countries were added to the level four COVID risk, and that means the CDC has identified high infection rates there. But it's only a recommendation. Still, it does raise questions about whether travel is a good idea right now. The Delta variant has complicated the travel industry's return to normalcy. I think we all thought we'd be at least further out of the woods with COVID than we are now. The Delta variant has really packed a punch when it comes to travel. Today, eight European and Caribbean countries were added to the CDC's highest COVID travel risk category. The countries like Serbia and Grenada aren't major destinations for most, but rising infections do raise questions about whether travel is smart right now. You know, travel is a personal decision, and it really has to be up to the individual. Local health experts urge caution. People can travel under the right circumstances. There are many variables, and, and we did travel be before we had a vaccine. Now we have a vaccine, but uh, you want to think about every aspect of your travel. Like where you're going and if infection rates are high there. Still, the vaccine is seen as the biggest piece of protection when traveling. If you wear masks and, and all the necessary safety hygiene practices that most people are by now are familiar, then I would say it's, it's safe to travel for fully vaccinated people. Now you can see a complete list of the countries and destinations identified by the C CDC as being high risk in terms of infection rates in this story at KATU.com. Well, Steve, Portland police were not able to provide us with an exact number on how many times this year they have seen shooting scenes with this many bullet casings left behind. But in our previous reports, they have said that multiple times this year, they've seen between 50 and 70 bullet casings at shooting scenes. For neighborhoods where this is happening, this is an extremely troubling trend. This is the sound of more than 100 shots being fired in the middle of the night. The video isn't long, but the shots are nonstop. More than a day after the shooting, bullet holes can be seen on just about everything on Northeast Prescott and 95th, from car doors and windows to inside bedroom walls and kitchen windows, only narrowly missing people who were asleep in their homes at 4.30 Sunday morning. My niece felt a bullet go by her shoulder. If she would have moved an inch closer, it would have ripped through her whole shoulder. If she would have moved an inch another way, as we were told by the officer, it could have hit her skull. Neighbors are too scared to show their face or say their name on camera. Worried with the shooters still on the loose, they could become the next target. Their fear has also gripped the many children who live here. The kids don't want to sleep. They don't want to play. You know, they're not worrying about kid things like they normally should. They're worrying about very adult, very terrifying things. Neighbors say there were several cars that pulled up into the neighborhood and then the shooting began. Portland police have not confirmed that information, but are asking anyone with information to come forward. While they continue their investigation, Park Rose neighbors are trying to make themselves and their children feel safe in their beds. Hug your family tight kiss your kids at night and thank God that you ain't got to answer a question of are they going to come back and kill us. According to Portland police, this shooting that happened on Sunday is the 873rd shooting so far reported in the city this year. Well, Lincoln, we just wrapped up an interview with ODOT about 45 minutes ago. The agency telling me repeatedly there are not concerns with this bridge. The bridge of concern is right over my shoulder. We'll zoom in on that gap there. This is the bridge that leads to the interstate bridge. And where that gap is, ODOT says, it's called an expansion joint. This concern all started, as you mentioned, with a Reddit post. Someone throwing a pun out there saying, mind the gap with a picture of the bridge. It prompted a lot of discussion as to what's going on. So we took it to ODOT for some clarification. Well, this is actually part of the design of the bridge. Now, we uh, rebuilt this bridge, uh, I-5 over the Oregon Slough, uh, in 1987, and that's part of this pre-stressed concrete. As time goes on, it gives a little bit, it, it begins to expand and contract a little bit, and that's part of what we're seeing in here. Coming up on K2 News at 8, there is one part of the bridge seen in that Reddit posting that did catch ODOT's eye, and now they're going to look into it. What that is coming up on our special edition of K2 News at 8. But again, ODOT stresses the bridge right now is safe, and they say it is regularly inspected.
According to a lawsuit filed by the Cook family, the bodies of 71-year-old Kathy and 41-year-old Justin were found a year ago today. They're now seeking more than $40 million, saying companies like Consumers and Pacific Power did not completely de-energize utility lines during times of high winds, and law enforcement did not give adequate warning of level three evacuations. We spoke with the Cooks after they identified Kathy and Justin last year. We filed a missing persons report and we still didn't hear anything. The waiting was the hardest because it just was day after day after day of waiting to hear, you know, are they alive? Are they not alive? The lawsuit says for more than five hours, the sheriff's office had direct knowledge of life-threatening conditions throughout the Santiam Canyon that should have triggered an earlier evacuation. It also claims METCOM did not begin sending out emergency notifications of the level three evacuation until three hours after the sheriff's office order. Travis Cook told us last year that his mom and brother were planning to evacuate to stay with him in Bend. It was still just a complete shock. It felt like a nightmare and I it just felt like it was just unreal. Like I could not, I never imagined in my life that something like this would ever happen, let alone to my mom and my brother. Another lawsuit was also filed by the parents of 13-year-old Wyatt Tofty. They're citing the same agencies, asking for $102 million. The Sheriff's Office, Metcom, and Pacific Power are all declining to comment on pending litigation.